Chapter 1 Flibby Yas Ermin Flibby Yas walked out of her flat with a spring in her step. It had been three weeks since her graduation from the academy, and the text had finally arrived. It had come directly from the admiral's office, and the wording was unquestionably authoritative, complete with verbose legalese. Cutting through the jargon, the subject of the text was her first assignment. She could hardly contain her excitement. The ship was called the Destiny Aurora, and if that didn't say fate, then nothing would. Not being able to withhold her secret any longer, it had been a whole seven minutes, she called her brothers and sisters to divulge the wonderful news. Flibby was born on Rainia, whose inhabitants were feline in nature by Earth standards. The year was 2346, and most races had intermingled, except those that were not yet members of the Planetary Coalition. The Yoss family, however, had maintained a pure bloodline throughout the centuries. Even after three years, walking through these bustling streets still awed her. Earth was just as amazing as she had been told, and ever since she was a child, she had longed to see its majestic cities and rolling landscapes. Presently, she was stationed in Santa Clarita, California, in the West Coast Academy dorms. Santa Clarita had once been known for its western cowboy-type architecture, but with the immigration of so many species to Earth, more modern buildings began springing up. This included the domed structure of the Coalition Academy from whence she had recently graduated. The thriving metropolis housed three million inhabitants, inclusive of no fewer than ten different species. The dry heat of California didn't much agree with Flibby. It was a sharp contrast to the frosty climate of Rainia. Her home on Rainia was also located in a city, but the term was used more loosely in comparison to those on Earth. Rainian cities were erected within jungle environments as well as frigid areas. Not all Rainians were comfortable in the snow and ice, but Flibby could remember the fun times when she and her litter had experienced pouncing about in the cold climate during their family holidays. Even then, she barely wore any clothing. Now, in this dry heat, she was made to wear a tight uniform, she was constantly pulling and prodding at it. The way it felt against her fur was something she had never grown accustomed to. She looked up at the blue sky to see the yellow-orange tint of the planetary defense grid. After the terrorist attacks in the 21st century, violence on the planet had waned, thus allowing for more collaboration between countries and ultimately space travel. However, Along with forging friendships, humans, as they called themselves, instead of Earthers as they were known everywhere else in the universe, also made enemies. A four-decade war commenced when the Zurathi felt the Earth's inhabitants were getting a bit too powerful within the universal scheme of things. The war abruptly ended, and a peace treaty was negotiated only several years ago. The Zurathi never joined the coalition, however, and they've been quiet since the ratification. The Duwaba, the Zurathi's term for empress, refused to step foot on Earth, as she felt the soil to be too sullied. So the coalition senators decided to take the high road and always traveled to Zurathi Prime for summit meetings. Though the Zurathis were not members of the coalition, the peace treaty was maintained by including the Duama in various meetings concerning galactic relations and operations. Universal instability in the form of interstellar criminals, murderers, and assassins was what prompted Flibby to aspire to join the law enforcement branch of the Coalition. She and her identical twin sister, Zia, had agreed to remain on Rainia and travel for a year before deciding what to do with the rest of their lives. Of course, they got in all sorts of trouble, but those were stories for another time. Flibby was glad Zia had talked her into it. The freedom of their first-time independence was incredibly liberating. Their parents were not thrilled by their choice, but had allowed it all the same. 
She didn't think she could grow any closer to her twin, but she was wrong. They definitely had their share of disagreements along the way, however. Three of her six siblings had graduated from the academy while she and Zia had been traveling. They now worked as pilots in different sectors, but she was the first to choose a law enforcement vessel to pilot rather than the battle cruisers her two brothers helmed. She enjoyed the speed and agility of smaller crafts, like her older sister, Velia, who was a badass fighter pilot. The Destiny Aurora was a Fleet Wing Mark IV, not the fastest ship in the universe, but definitely not the slowest. It was also a bit outdated, but she would cherish it and treat it like she was the sole owner. Fleet Wings were known for their maneuverability and their lightweight, albeit thick, armor plating, and nothing more. Their armaments left a great deal to be desired, but as a law enforcement pilot, she wouldn't see much action in the realm of dogfights. Not that she wasn't up for the challenge. Her combat scores were stellar, which was why she got away with her continued and constant insubordination. Her brothers and sisters had each told her on separate occasions that if she kept up with her attitude, she would never graduate and would probably be given an assignment flying a transport of elderly couples to the market and back. Yet, here she was, text in hand, assignment at the ready, and all the excitement to boot. It didn't hurt that her instructors were mostly men, and if there was one thing she knew how to do, it was how to turn on the charm in flirtatious and complimentary ways. She called it her feline wiles, and of all her litter, only her younger sister, Aradine, was in her league when it came to this particular talent. Her litter consisted of three brothers and three sisters, with Aradine being her sole junior. Of course, this was by mere seconds, but that still counted as far as her family was concerned. Those seconds established a ranking from eldest to youngest, and was thoroughly documented during any Rainian birth. Brushing aside her black and white streaked mane, she put on her calm glasses and pressed the button that connected all of her litter into a single conference call. The call to her parents would wait until later. Images of her siblings appeared before her, some wearing big smiles, others not so much. The military had augmented some of her brother's stoic intensities, not that they had much of a sense of humor before enlisting. When they were children, she had worked extra hard to maintain a jovial household, which mostly got her into trouble. Now, she would be able to cause trouble all across the universe. How awesome was that? Braylon, Gentorian, and Redorallo greeted her with judgmental scowls, which only made Flibby's smile widen. So, Flibbethonia? Her brother, Braylon, addressed her, knowing how much she hated her unabbreviated name. Which transport will you be piloting? The Geriatric Express? Leave her be! Aradine scolded, and then instantly smiled as she addressed her sister. So, tell us, did you get something good? Oh, heck yeah! Flibby exclaimed, unable to contain her excitement any longer. Wait, where is Zia? She looked at the HUD and saw that the call had not connected. We were hoping you had spoken to her. None of us have heard from her in a few days. Velia said with a smidge of concern in her voice. I'm sure she's fine. So, uh, tell us about your assignment, Aradine said, purposely changing the subject. She apparently knew something the others didn't. Flibby made a mental note to question her privately later. What did you get? You're looking at the new pilot of the Coalition Law Craft, Destiny Aurora. Uh, please, hold your applause. Several of her sisters made sound effects of a crowd cheering. Her tail swished back and forth so uncontrollably that it hit a passing child in the face as he was led down the street by his mother. Oops, uh, sorry. Flibby called over her shoulder. It's clean, I promise. The woman responded by shooting back an angry look. This ship sounds familiar, Bray said, 
his eyes rotating to the ceiling in thought. The whole litter had big, violet eyes that heavily contrasted with their white fur and black stripes. Flibby and Zia were the rebels of the group. They each wore thick, black eyeliner, but Flibby took it one step further by adorning each ear with two gold earrings, topping it off with a stud through her right nostril. "'Who's your CO?' Flibby had to put her thinking cap on for a moment. She hadn't recognized her commanding officer's name while reading the text. The fact that it was a man was the only element of consequence. She had infinitely more difficulty taking commands from women than men. Maybe it was due to her strained relationship with her mother, whom she loved dearly. However, spending more than five minutes with her mother ranked up there with gouging out her own eyeballs. Suddenly, the name popped into her head which saved her the time of pulling the text back up. Oh, a Lieutenant Inspector Carver, but I'm just going to call him LT for short. Lieutenant Jace Carver? Rhett asked, with apprehension in his voice. Yeah, that sounds right. The whole call became very silent. <laughs> Why is everyone looking at me like that? That's great news, Flibby. Her older sister, Velia, said, trying to backpedal. What? What's the deal with this guy? Tell me. He has a reputation, Jen said without elaborating. For... Flibby asked, casting out the hook with the hopes of fishing the answer from them. Being an absolute lunatic. Bray, please, Rhett said, stopping him. Do you want to be court-martialed? You have no idea who's listening in. It's fine, Flibby. Carver's just known to be a bit intense, that's all. He's former Secret Service. His wife was assassinated on his watch, and he's spent years hunting down the killer without success. No one knows much more. Just be careful, sis, Bray said. Then again, with you at the helm, he might be ready for the white-padded room by the end of the tour. <laughs> Everyone laughed. Everyone but Flippy. Hey! Take that back! I'm extremely professional, I'll have you know. This caused further uncontrollable laughter to erupt. <laughs> Always good to hear from you, sis, Jen said. Congratulations again, Eradany reiterated. The others concurred through their giggles, and the lines disconnected almost simultaneously. Flibby took the glasses off with a sigh. <sighs> now they get a sense of humor? She reflected to herself. Well... Maybe she wasn't the most professional airman in the fleet, but she was a damn good pilot, and her litter was not going to quell her excitement. It was the Destiny Aurora! The name alone made it feel like home.